Hello, this is John Klesnick with Bonnet Pro. I'm at an Agway store that I've serviced for 35 years. We're going to do our 35th strip. We stripped the other half last week. So what I'm going to do is walk you through everything you need to do to strip a floor from the finish, how you apply it properly so you don't get built up on the edges, how to strip it properly, how to assist your stripping so it doesn't gum up your pads or your brushes. And I'm just going to walk you through everything that we're going to do here and it will assist you in whether your, your operation is larger or smaller. So <clears throat> in the sprayer here, uh, I have the stripper. A lot of guys mop it down. I used to do that and it would run under the islands and it would bleed out all night and cause stains on the wax. So that depends on how uneven your floor is. Now when I spray this down, I have a lot more control. I use at least half the stripper that I used to use. So I use a lot less product. What I do though is I put an ultra low drift tip on here so I can spray this. It won't aerosolize. This is from the pesticide industry. I used to put them on the carpet max and I can spray this down and I don't choke myself. It's not a, it's not a health hazard. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, even though we swept it and no matter how good you sweep it, you're still going to miss stuff. So I'm going to go over it with the leaf blower. You're going to see a little dust storm go across the floor. We're going to finish prepping it that way and then I'm going to spray it. And then I'll get into uh, the stripping machine, I'll get into uh, the auto scrubber and some of the other things and I'll show you how to mop properly so uh, you don't get built up on the edges so it makes your next stripping job much easier. So let's fire up the leaf blower and see how much dust we get off of this floor that we thought we swept good. type of store you're in, you might not be able to do this, but this will uh, help clear out all the little stones and grit in the edges. Uh, I know we're running an auto scrubber, but even with that, you can, things can still slide underneath of the squeegee. So that every step we do properly now, the next step is easier and you get a better end result. So the more junk I get off the floor, the less when we go to edge by hand uh, with the microfiber cloths. The less stuff we have to pick up, it's just cleaner and faster. So this is a few minutes to do this, and it just makes every other step much, much better. Okay, so now we have the floor swept and blown clean, and, and the floor's uh, prepped nice. We're going to put down the stripper. Like I said, we're using an ultra-low drift tip that's not going to aerosolize it. On this job, I'm using Diversi um, Pro Strip at about 25 ounces per gallon. I mix it a little hot. That way, just like with uh, my, my encapsulation products, I'd rather make it a little hot because it, the chemical is going to work faster, it's going to do the job faster, and it saves me time. So I want this to come off right the first time, so I put a little bit of extra in here, so about 25 ounces per gallon into hot water, and I'm going to spray this down. I'm going to do an area to the poles <clears throat> and over to where the John Deere tractors are, and I'll do this whole section here. And after I spray it, I'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll move to the next step, which is we're going to scrub it. Now, you want to be very careful to spray away from, um, to, to spray backwards, just like you're pre-spraying the carpet. You want to get enough on to cover the wax, so there's enough to emulsify it, and you want to walk away from it. Because anybody that's stripped before knows how slippery that gets, and it gets dangerous, so you don't fall and hurt yourself. So I'm going to apply this down. I can really control what I'm putting down with a stripper. Um, with a sprayer, I mean, and that way uh, I'm going to use less product and I have, I can get up to the edges good without flooding it so it doesn't flood underneath the edges. I'm going to make two passes. This ha tip has, uh, spray tip has a big uh, opening on the end of it so I'm going to cover ground pretty quick with it and it's just like pre-spray pre in a carpet. Um, you guys are used to that so this isn't an issue. And off we go. You got to be aware of low spots that uh, might have a buildup of wax. So how you put the wax down helps pre prevent that in the future. 
uh, and we'll, we'll get into that when we are waxing. But for right now, we're just going to spray this down. This will probably take me, oh, 8 to 12 minutes. So it's not a big, big amount of time to cover what's probably six to 800 feet, I would guess. And uh, we'll do this next section in a minute. Okay. So this section is about 49, 47 feet long. It took me about seven minutes to spray it. It really didn't take me long at all to spray it. And it was a, to me, it's a lot better than using a mop and a bucket and it, that gets big puddles and it runs and it just you don't have control over. So we sprayed that down. I let it sit about 10 minutes and now I'm gonna scrub it. I'm, I'm not gonna bore you with showing 15 minutes of me scrubbing a floor. Uh, I'm gonna do this little front section. But I do wanna tell you this. Like I said, I've been doing this for 35 years. I used to do department stores where we would do 60,000 feet in four nights. So before anybody in my team gets on that floor, I'm going to completely scrub it one time because right now that floor is dangerous, even for me. Even sometimes a 600-pound machine will slide on the floor. So I'm going to scrub it first. It's going to break up the emulsified wax. It's going to give you good traction when you step. And once I go over it once, then I'll have people come on and just check the edges real quick, and then I'll be scrubbing it a second time. But one of the things I do, and this is a, one of the best tips I've learned, is this machine will spray out fresh water. So as this uh, chemical starts to eat into the wax and it can get thick and it can get a little goopy, I'm going to rehydrate that wax by spraying a little fresh water on it as I go. And that reliquifies everything. It keeps my brushes clean. It'll keep your pads clean. It'll give you a better strip job. And it just is such a nice, uh, good tip to have so you don't get gummed up pads, which can be a nightmare once they turn to glue. So I'm going to do this little section here, and then we'll move on to uh, picking it up. Another thing, too, is I use an oversized brush that gets right up to the edge. You see that? That way, I just have my people check it real quick, um, and there's not a lot of edging. I don't wax right up against the edge, so there's not a big buildup that you have to scrape off and spend a lot of time on. So it's just a much smarter way to do it that I've learned over the last three and a half decades. So some of these areas dried a little bit. I'm going to rehydrate them. I'm going to redistribute the stripper and uh, just, just helps it come up real nice. I can get this right up to the edge just the way I want it. And it's very little hand edging, which is labor saving. It, it doesn't wear the crew out as much. And uh, this is just a nice fast way. You see how nice, nice and bright and white that is. Um, so the stripper's working really well. And this area will just take me a few minutes with this type of machinery. I'm using a, uh, I believe it's a Stratagrit brush, and I put um, three 15 pound bricks on each head so I get better uh, downforce and scrubbing with the machine. On carpet, you don't want to over. Um, overweight the machine it can be damaging the fibers however with stripping that extra weight is is can be very helpful so what's nice about this too is I don't have any cords that I'm not never going to get shocked using a machine like this uh, so it's good to have options uh, Aztec makes a, a stripping machine it doesn't rehydrate I, I don't think so but it covers large areas of ground very quickly uh, Pat Hanford with Heaven's Best is, is making the carpet max and it's just so fast and easy to do a section this big uh, with the right kind of equipment. So now that you see my foot slide, now that I've gone over this once, this will be safe for the other people uh, to walk on this and I don't have to worry about anybody on my team falling. Well, actually, I might bore you with doing this whole section here, at least the first time, because you can just see how quick it can be uh, with the right equipment. Like I said, they'll go around and they'll do a little bit of checking on the edges, but they won't have much uh, hand edging to do at all, really. 
and then I'll go around, I'll hit this for a second time, just to make sure I scrubbed everything, it's, it's the way we want it. And th what, what this does too, is this takes a layer of floor finish off, so now the remaining stripper can penetrate deeper to get further down into the wax surface. So this is an important step to, to go over it twice, because I get a little bit extra dwell time, and uh, I end up with a better, more even result. Now this stripper and the new strippers, this won't take this floor down to where it's chalky looking, where it's completely stripped, but that's okay because the little bit that's left behind acts like a sealer and we use less finish that way. So I'm just about done this. Um, so by the time I sprayed this and did the first scrub, I only have about 20 minutes into this eight or 900 feet really really fast and easy to do we'll have this whole area prepped and picked up and cleaned in probably about 45 minutes and then we'll move to the last area of this particular job um, so it's a it's a really smooth setup and here we go we're we're done the first strip it was super easy super fast to do this area and uh, We'll, we'll go to the next section where we're picking this stuff bug, up. put a black pad on it, and that brush gets up to the edge, but just to make sure, that way I have eyes on every little edge, every corner, every detail of this job. Um, I'll go around it by hand and just do this real quick, just to, just to check it, because it moves the stripper out of the way, it moves the dirty water out of the way, and I can see, did it give me the job I wanted, did it give me the, the results I wanted, and... Um, Again, this this will take just a few minutes to do this. So I did my edging, doodle bug, black pad, go around the edging real quick. Like I said, the machine got right up to the edge. There's really not much to do here, especially with the way I wax it. I'm going to run the machine again. Now, if you look at the finish now that I hydrated it the first time, I sprayed it after I first scrubbed it while I was, while I was scrubbing it, the solution's laying nice and dry. So when I run this a second time, just to make sure I got everything, I'm not going to add more moisture to it. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then we're going to pick up the dirty solution uh, with the Tomcat scrubber. All right, so now we have the floor scrubbed uh, two times, edged. So what I've done is I use these uh, little uh, neutralizing packs. You drop them in, they dissolve. So I have them in the water on this. But before I do that and run my auto scrubber, I'm going to spray down some defoamer. This way, you can see the foam on the floor. This way, when the vacuum hits it, I don't have a problem with my machine and having to clear up foam on my machine because that, if you don't have the foamer on hand and that happens, it's a nightmare trying to deal with the foamer. It'll really just ruin your night. So we'll spray a little bit of this down and I'll, I'll squeegee, I'll run the squeegee on the machine first and then I'll go back and scrub it to neutralize it and then wash it. So that's going to be the next step. Is the way this squeegee is designed, I can get right up to the edge. This will go around and I get a nice clean edge on that. And then what we're going to do is uh, where we can't pull out with a machine, if there's tight corners, we have a little squeegee, like a window squeegee on a stick. And so I'm going to go around and pull that out and I'll go around and suck it up with the machine. It's a real fast way to do it. So you don't, we don't mop, and, uh, mop any of this up hardly at all. So it makes it faster and nicer for you. So the more... Okay, so now we have everything prepped, and this is one of the parts where when you sweep it and, and blow it clean in the beginning with the, with the uh, leaf blower, you don't have stuff built up in the edges. Because what we like to do when we're done, standing up five feet away, it looks clean. When you get up close to it, there's still maybe some stuff here. Uh, the machines aren't perfect. So I'll take a microfiber cloth 
in a neutralized solution with one of those packs and I'll go around and hand clean all the edges so this looks really really nice when I'm done but so even though we blew it and swept it and washed it there's still all kinds of stuff that you can get up with the cloth so you have a nice clean edge doing it this way it's important step okay so we have everything prepped if for any reason you guys ever use a fan make sure there's plenty of distance between the fan and the area where the wet wax is or let the wax dry for 10-15 minutes before you put the fan on it otherwise you can actually put waves and ripples in the wax and it'll dry that way ask me how I know that it's a bad thing so another thing is wear old clothes because the stripper is hard on everything especially your shoes rinse your equipment off and rinse your equipment out sprayers or whatever you use with neutralized water so it doesn't deteriorate uh, your machinery your pumps uh, your sprayers that types of things so what we're going to do now is is I'm using a 30 percent solids finish and what that means is uh, the amount of solids in it some some finishes are 17 percent so if I put on two coats of 30 percent that's 60 percent now I need three coats of 17 percent or 20 percent to equal that if I put on a third coat of 30 percent solids then I need five coats of the other type of finish so I've used this Spartan uh, on and on 30 percent high solids finish forever takes a couple times to buff it up even with a propane machine but it lasts if you go on encapsulation world there's pictures of this job that was eight ten months old near the end of its one year uh, cycle that still this floor looked really good with just two coats on it. now this is the front area by the service desk the front entrance I put an extra coat on there and I'll put two coats on that and then two coats everywhere else around but I want to show you what I do when I coat when I go to wax I pick my lane and I keep the bucket when I ring it in the lane I know some guys use the the apparatus where you pull it and stuff that's fine I've never done that um, I've done it this way for 35 years so I'm old school so because when I ring this out a little bit it's going to splash and what I don't want to do is have a bucket over there where I'm walking over here and I have drips because those drips will accumulate and dry and you have bumps on the floor and you have an uneven surface so what I'll do is I'll let this I use a, a, the largest rayon mop I can get I like the way it coats I'm gonna put this in here now I dripped I made a mess already and I'm gonna give it just a little squeeze now what I'm gonna do is I'm in my lane I'm gonna do this area so I'm gonna push the bucket out of the way and when I pull this down I'm distributing the wax so I don't have a big puddle at the end and it's dry up here I have a more even distribution of the wax and I'm not gonna run it right up against the edge otherwise you end up with a thick coating on the edge at the next strip job you have to scrape off with razors and scrub off and you have a really big problem so I do this a little differently so I'm near the edge and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna feather that in and the other thing I do too where'd you go is I'm gonna do this little end cap and when I do that spot I'm gonna do the little the little end and all the way down so when I'm done I don't have this aisle to do I've, I've filled it in already so I'm going to do an overlapping S pattern so that way I don't have any misses you can go forward and back now I'm going to go up against that edge a little bit because my mop isn't as is laden with the wax I'm going to pull it back and then fill it in and that way I get a nice even coat and I don't have big thick globs of wax all over the place so I'm gonna wax this whole thing here um, using the sprayer for the stripper the spraying uh, the electric sprayer I went through about 16 gallons of stripper to do this whole 5,000 foot location which isn't very much it's less than a five gallon container of uh, stripping solution and I'll go through about a little less I think than 10 gallons of floor finish uh, probably about seven or so um, so now I'm gonna run this bead right down the edge here so I have a nice straight line so when I do this next section I know where my hard edge is and I can I can blend it in real nice so I'll finish this and we'll take a peek at what it looks like when I'm done alright so I have one coat down uh, two coats in this area like I said this is 30 percent solids so no sealer it put a nice uh, coating on this 
When I put this second coat down of the 30% solids, it's going to really layer it up. It'll, it'll further even out, and then when I hit this with the buffer the first couple of times, then it's going to look like you have six or seven coats on it. It'll look really thick and nice. So I'll put some uh, pictures on Encapsulation World after I've buffed this a few times, after it's been serviced. And uh, the buffer hardens it. It takes off the peaks on the floor finish, uh, and that's what makes it uh, smoother, which makes it more reflective. Um, so I think we got a pretty good uh, job out of this. I think we got a pretty good result. We have two days of about um, one, two, three, four, about four and a half hours with two people, plus a little bit of prep time. So we were here at five. It's ten and nine. I'll be out of here by twenty after, and I'm gonna wax my way out and turn the lights off so I don't have to wait for this last coat to dry. So uh, we'll have this on Encapsulation World and on YouTube. I hope this helps some people, some new guys. If uh, you're getting into this, you're not sure what to do. And uh, good luck with your future strip and wax jobs. Take care.